There is often a difference between what political leaders say in public and what they may have known in private. As we discovered when we received access to data from WikiLeaks, the whistleblower's website, it contained nearly 400,000 secret reports known as SIG Acts. That's short for significant activities. We wanted to uh, um, provide the first draft of history. This, these were raw uh, accounts right from the ground written by American soldiers. It was interesting to see how uh, they compared and contrasted sometimes with the testimony, the first-hand testimony we got from Iraqi civilians who we went out to interview. After the soldiers killed Wahid, the young men allege that they were assaulted. <laughs> The classified report gives a different version of events. Respectfully transported the vehicle and the deceased to the family's house in order to allow them to begin funeral preparations and conducted consequence management. It just provides how um, uh, difficult it is to establish uh, uh, what really happened, but also raises fundamental concerns. And the major concerns that we really nailed down were concerns that we saw repeated again and again. Tonight, we reveal reports that US troops were killing more civilians than insurgents at checkpoints, that they killed people who were trying to surrender, that even after the scandal of Abu Ghraib, US soldiers continued to abuse prisoners and also how the Americans stand accused of turning a blind eye to the torture and murder of detainees by the Iraqi security services. Everyone knew that there was um, uh, widespread violence in Iraq and that there, at some points it was in hell on earth. So revealing that people were dying in, in droves is not going to be sensational reporting. Um, however, there were moments that came out that are of major concern. For instance, we found uh, one small uh, report that actually um, d described how an Apache helicopter pilot was um, um, focused on two insurgents who were trying to surrender, their arms were up, and he called through to base and the response came back from the lawyer, you cannot surrender to an aircraft. Yet we discovered four reports where insurgents were allowed to surrender to a helicopter. But this video, leaked by Live Leaks, shows that others were gunned down with their hands in the air. So clearly they killed two men trying to surrender. Now, if you speak to other lawyers, not clearly the lawyer who advised the pilot, but other lawyers would say that's a breach of the uh, Geneva Convention. There are also some things that we knew, but we could not prove. For instance, uh, President Obama handed over um, 180,000 prisoners to the Iraqi authorities. But you are not allowed to hand over a prisoner to an authority that you know tortures. The Americans made public claims that they investigated allegations of torture in some of Iraq's prisons on seven separate occasions between late November 2005 and March 2006. But the people being held at those facilities were being properly taken care of. They were being fed, they had water, they were taken care of. So no abuse, no evidence of torture in those facilities. But the data shows that during the same time period, the army recorded 76 separate allegations of abuse of Iraqis by the Iraqi security services in other places and reported them up their chain of command. What the documents proved is the US government knew that people were being tortured. And so we could also show that President Obama, even with the best intentions of the world, but President Obama did break the Geneva Convention. Tonight, we tell the story of that war and occupation that the US military doesn't want you to know, the one they wrote themselves. I went round the houses to the major US networks and said, look, we're looking at all this, do you want a piece? And there was lots of conversations, um, but every single conversation ended in a dead end. And I think that there was a huge uncomfortableness in the part of the American media to cover this event. 